Welcome to the Purple Mash webinar on getting creative with art and music. In this webinar, we're going to look at how your pupils can create digital art, animations and music compositions with the Purple Mash tools and how they can share these online using display boards and blogging and also how they can be used in other programs. So first of all, let's click on the tools button from the home page. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom right of the page to the music and sound tools. On the left we have 2Explore, 2Beat and 2Sequence. There's also a tool there called 2 Creator Story which is an animation ebook making program and we'll have a look at that later on. First of all I'm going to look at 2Explore. This is an app designed for the early years in Key Stage 1. It's a very simple sound making program. Uh, the sound on those you can hear them there there if I click on the new file button at the top left there is a drop-down list of other options let's go to the sound effects Ooh, brilliant sound effects there so first of all I'm going to press the record button and then let there we go the sounds and if I press play there's my beats per minute it's my speed option there I'm going to play it that <laughs> now when I press play you will notice there's a loop button at the bottom right which I'm actually going to turn off so that it just plays once through so that's a fabulous piece of work my soundscape I'm going to press the save button and by default it will ask me to save it into the my work folder I'm going to give this a file name and press save now once I've saved my amazing piece of work, there are a number of options I can use in the share button here, the globe icon. I could share it to a display board or I could blog about my work. So I'm going to first of all use this option to share it to a display board. Now you'll notice I've created some display boards here. Here is a display board called My Music and I'm going to send that to the display board. So if you wanted pupils to send their work, share it with their friends, you could create a display board in the admin section. So that's now been shared to the My Music display board and I'll show you how that can be seen by other children. Let's come out of this tool here. Let's go to the sharing option at the top of the screen and let's go to this display board, the My Music display board that I just shared that piece of work to. Now you'll notice it's not actually displaying there. The reason being is that as a teacher I have to approve any work that is sent to the display board. So if I click the edit button, go down to the unapproved items, there is the piece of work that I've just sent. If I click on this little pencil, I can write a comment in there or I can approve the work. Now, if there were a number of pieces of work in there that the children had sent, if there were, for example, a whole class's worth of work, then I could multi-select them and click that little pencil and edit them all at once, approve them all at once. Let's come out of that display board and go back to the home page, back into the tools, and scroll down again. Let's have a look. So we looked at 2Explore. Let's look at 2Beat. Now this particular tool creates a drum pattern. So there are different kick drum beats. There are six of those. If I click on that, you'll hear the different kick drums. And there are different snare sounds, different hi-hats, and different percussion sounds. So let's choose the number of beats I want in my piece of music. I want 16 beats in my piece of music and I'm going to choose the second drum kit. So I'm going to put them on the one and the three, the first and the third beat of the bar and I'm going to put the snare. Let's have a listen to the snare. Oh yes, let's have that nice rim shot of the snare on the two and the four beats. I might increase the volume of my kick drum and decrease the volume of my snare drum just a little bit. I'm going to put a hi-hat on the third beat of each bar. Let's see what happens and let's put some clapping on the second beat and perhaps some, oh, maybe a cowbell. Let's have a cowbell on the fourth beat of the bar. Oh, let's see what happens there. Right, let's press play and see what happens. Ooh. So I can speed that up using my BPM, my speed slider at the top here. Ooh. Very exciting. Again, I'm going to save that. I'm going to call that my beats this time. 
and I'm going to do something else with that. I'm going to do something with that later on. I'm going to put that into an animation later on, so I'll show you that in a minute. Let's come out of that and have a look at the third of the music tools down the bottom here. This is called Two Sequence. Children can drag and drop different sounds, including acoustic guitar, bells and chimes, all sorts of sounds here. An electric guitar, some scales, some sound effects, some short clips, violin, etc. They can also add their own sound. So if I click on this uh, plus at the bottom here, you've got lots of built in sounds. There we go, it's a nice screen there. So I could drag that into somewhere in the somewhere in my piece of music. Let's put some sounds in here. Let's have an electric guitar over here. Let's have some sound effects. I like the heartbeat. That's a good one. That's a good one. Ooh, that's an excellent one. Let's put a couple of those in here. And maybe finish off with a bird. Here we go. <laughs> An interesting soundscape. So again, you can loop it, turn the loop off, and I'm going to save that to call it my soundscape. So next to the save icon, there is this button here called export file. It looks like the save icon, but it has a green arrow pointing out of it. I can now export this sound file as an MP3, which I could then use in any other program that allows me to embed MP3s. So there it is as an MP3. It will just open and play in your normal music player. There we go. But it will also be able to be exported into or imported into any other programs that you use, such as Podium or Audacity or any other software. Let's come out of that now. And I'm going to go back to the home page and look at some of the animation tools. So I'm going to click again on the tools button and scroll down to the art and design programs here. And I'm going to choose this tool here to animate. So this is to animate. It starts off with four slides and I can add as many slides as I like. I'm going to select slide number one and I'm going to add a background to choose to set my scene. Now I might, for example, have the forest scene. I want to add that across all of the frames. And as you can see, I'm going to draw something over my slide number one. Let's draw a little red riding hood walking through the forest. There she is. She's going to walk through the forest. Fabulous. So I'm going to drag and drop her from slide number one to slide number two. And I've just copied and pasted her directly from slide one to slide two by dragging and dropping. Now I'm going to rub some of her out and change so that her legs position, position of her legs so that she looks like she's walking. Now if I rub that out, I can't tell immediately where her legs were on the previous slide. If I click on this onion skin, it shows me very faintly where her legs were on the previous slide. So I can choose my red pen and now draw her legs in a slightly different position so it looks like she's going to be walking. There we go. So I'll drag her onto slide number three and let's rub out her legs again and redraw her legs. There we go. So let's just see what we've got so far. She looks like she's walking. She kind of needs to move. Let's let's have a look. Slide number two. Let's go back to slide two and use my select tool, which is this broken square on the left hand side. And I'm going to just select the whole of Little Red Riding Hood and just move her slightly. There she is. So I've drawn her legs in a different position. This time let's move Little Red over there. So there we go. I've now added seven slides to my Little Red Riding Hood animation. And I'm going to press the play button and you can see Little Red walking across the forest. Now, I need to add some sounds to that. I'm going to click on the first slide, first of all, and add my sound to the first slide. There are lots of built-in sounds that you can use. I could have her um, walking to some music, or I could create a little piano soundscape, or record a voiceover for my animation, or open a sound file. So I'm going to use the My Beats sound that I created and saved in the My Work folder. And if I now press play, it will play my animation with my soundscape. Right, I'm now going to save that and call it Little Red. And again, I'm going to use my share icon and send that to a display board that I've pre-created. So I've created this display board here called My Animations. And that is now on the display board. The other thing I can do with my share icon is blog about my piece of work. So I've created a blog here called Animation Blog and I'm going to send that to this particular blog. I'm going to give it a title a summary and I can write it in the body of the blog also. So I'm going to change the font size here, maybe change the colour of the text. 
and I click save. That's now been added to the blog. If I come out of there and again go to my sharing icon at the top of the page here, click on sharing and instead of this time going to the display boards, if I click on this tab underneath which says shared blogs, I can go to my animation blog. Now to blog has recognized that I am a teacher so it's pre-approved this piece of work. Let's now have a look at some of the other art and design tools available to you. I'm going to click on the art topic button on the home page here and it will show you some of the art tools at the top, some of the paint projects available to you in different categories and some writing projects at the bottom about some of the very famous artists you might study. Let's have a look first of all at the tools at the top. We've had a look at 2Animate. Let's have a quick look at 2Paint and 2Paint a Picture. 2Paint is a very simple tool where you have the pens down the left hand side, some further tools un under the spanner the tools button there and you can simply draw a picture. You can use some of the backgrounds here at the top, some built in backgrounds and you can write a very simple sentence at the bottom. Let's have a look now at 2 paint a picture. This has a range of 17 painting tools that children can use to create some lovely art. So I'm going to choose the splash tool first of all and use my slider at the bottom here to create a quite large splash. Let's choose some different colours in my palette. And if I click on the new file button at the top left here, I can go to one of the other options and add something else across my picture. It will ask me do I want to use the paint picture I created on the previous tool. Yes I do. Let's now choose a different colour and add some swirlies there. And again, I have a section at the bottom where I can write a simple sentence about the inspiration for my artwork. I'm going to choose the new file button again and add something to do with the e-collage. Now, e-collage allows me to add a stamp of my own creation into my picture. And I can decrease and increase the size of my stamp and pop it wherever I like. Again, I have some clip art here. If I want to use some of the clip art options, I can do a stamp of those in my artwork as well. So let's come out of that and go and explore one of the other tools. Let's have a look at To Design and Make. This is a fabulous tool. It is essentially a computer aided design tool, very simple for children to use. You have lots of built in templates, there's a house there. You've also got masks for role play, and you've got some basic prisms and pyramids. Let's have a look at the car template to start with this. And I've got my side view, my net view and my 3D view. Let's change the points on my side view to make my car a little bit more sporty. And I'm going to colour it in using my pattern fill tool. I'm going to rub out that standard pattern there and create my own zigzag pattern very quickly here. Click OK and paint the side of it. If I want to paint the roof, I need to click on the net view and I can then scroll into different sections and paint those. Now you'll notice when I print this out on paper, if I choose to print it on paper, I've got these little tabs here that I can fold under to make a three dimensional shape. If you have a 3D printer at your school or access to one, you can download an STL file just by clicking that button at the top there and then feed that data into your 3D printer to create an actual 3D version of this, which will look exactly like that as a three dimensional shape which the children can then colour in afterwards. Now you'll notice in all of the purple mash tools next to the exit button is this video icon which will very quickly and easily guide you through how to use all of the different facets of the tool that you're trying to master with your class. So I'm back on the art topic page let's have a look at some of these paint projects under here under different categories. Now these are brilliant tools that you can use across Key Stage 1, 2 and early years and you can use the textured pens on the left hand side to create some amazing drawings very simply and quickly. Now many of the art and music tools are also available for the younger children in Minimash. If I now go into Minimash and go outside the classroom Drawing and painting. I have my drawing and painting options. Music. And my music options here. You will find 2Beat and 2Explore, but not 2Sequence, which is a particular tool for Key Stage 2. Drawing and painting. And many of the drawing and painting options. Here is 2 paint a picture And here are some of the paint projects that are applicable for early years. So that concludes our Purple Mash webinar on getting creative with art and music.
I hope you found it useful and thank you for listening. Please do contact us if you have any questions. We are more than happy to help. Enjoy using Purple Mash.